Hey, welcome to the Night Crossing. This is episode three of our DIY camper build. So there I was thinking, have you subscribed yet? I don't think you have. If you have, thanks. But if you haven't, what are you waiting for? How are you going to get notified of the next progress video of our camper build unless you subscribe and ring that little bell down below so you get notified every time that I put up a new video. That's what you need to do. There, did you do it? Okay, whatever, you can wait till the end of the video and do it then. So I'm just finishing up an extremely busy slow week. Now that seems kind of counterintuitive until I say that life, work, everything normal has been extremely busy this week so the camper had to take the back burner, hence the camper had a slow week. All I've managed to do this week, I have five sheets of quarter inch plywood now skinned onto the steel stud frame that you saw last week. Uh, I think I made a mistake with it actually. I've got everything down, sealed, screwed in place. I, I went through, I, I pre-drilled, and then I countersunk all the holes into the plywood because I wanted the screws to lay flat. However, the, the fine thread screws, the moment they come tight, they're ripping free and, and freely spinning in, in the metal stud. The, the stud isn't thick enough to keep grip on the screw. So I've got a lot in the in the wall that are free spinning. So essentially in those areas, the sealant is the only thing that's keeping the plywood there. So there's a couple places where I was like 46 inches. So I, I, I trimmed off of the 48 inch wide material so I could line up halfway on that stud rather than have to add another stud to put two sheets side by side or have one flopping. No good. So. I broke it down to be six sheets going across. Now, after I had five of them from the back to the front, that's uh, probably 300 screws and two tubes of sealant. Once I had that done, then it finally registered on me. I don't know if it was that much of a zone or just you know able to get to it a little bit at a time throughout the week, but I got up to the bunk portion. Look at that, see, I'm pointing. I was pointing over there, now I'm pointing over there. Like you can see, the camper that's on the floor behind me, or the wall of it anyway, otherwise it's a very skinny camper. So actually, I'll just show you. To bring you along like this, you can see where I've put the screws in. Yes, absolutely, everything is flush with the surface because, I, like I said, I pre-drilled the holes into the stud so that I found first with the screw, it was spinning on the stud before it cut through and it was bending up the wood, so I didn't want uh, basically, I didn't want a pile of sawdust or anything to accumulate or give room for the metal stud to curl up and have a burr where there's going to be a gap between the plywood and stud. So I pre-drilled them first and then I countersunk the holes so that when the screws went in, everything was nice down and flush. And you can see it actually did pull some stuff down in, the, in this, where the seam is here. It pulled it down tight enough that the sealant actually uh, came up through the, the joint and I mean I guess I wasn't really concerned about aesthetics this is going to be fiberglass and painted over anyway so anything that's here is going to disappear but like I said some of these screws were free spinning when they were in because they they spun in the metal stud the stud gave way stud is a lot softer than those screws and I did all of these screws before I had that Epiphany, or as I like to call it, an epiphonic moment. Epiphonic's not really a word, but it is if you want it to be, right? It's like anything else nowadays. You say it enough, it's true. It's got to be a word. So, the last piece, the very last piece, I said, well, smarten up. Try it out. I riveted the studs together, 
I wonder if I could rivet the plywood to the stud. I ruled it out from the get-go because I thought for sure that the strength of compressing the rivet would bite into this quarter inch plywood. This is just Maranti plywood, it's a subfloor plywood, so it's, it's cheap, cheap grade stuff. I say cheap, but prices of wood nowadays, nothing is cheap anymore. Even three years ago, I'd pay 11 or $12 for a sheet of, a four by eight sheet of Maranti, and these were $33 each. Hey, wake up, man, we just got robbed. That's disgusting, it's gross. But that backs up my whole thing of the reason I'm trying to do this with metal studs versus wood, because the price of wood makes this camper unaffordable to me right now. Metal studs, no, well, game on, let's play. But anyway, back to it. I digress. For the last one, here's the rivets. Ow. Of course I'd point to the one that has a bit of a stud left in it. But, they look good. They're barely above the surface. Oh, and there's a stud left on that one. Sweet. So, yeah, I've got some tending to a few of these rivets. But for the most part, well, not even for the most part, none of them had pulled into the plywood. I didn't have to back them with any washers front or back side. So these look really good and they have a lot more holding strength than the screws. You can see even right here how it's pulled it down deeper than what the screw has. So now my question is, do I rely on the sealant? Will that be good enough? Or will I drill a bunch more holes and put rivets in along the rest of the camper too? Why don't you comment down below and tell me what you think I should do? Leave it as is or put more rivets in? I'm not gonna take the screws out. They'll stay because, well, that's just more holes that I have to patch. It's amazing. Once you have a camper wall laying on the floor of your shop, how limited you become on floor space. So you are up towards my ceiling now. Uh, the tripod is on top of my table saw because of what I want to show you behind me. This is one of the windows I told you about. I have five windows. Two of them are this. Two of them are a 24 by 22 window. They will be in the bunk. So. This is the explanation for the whole angle here. In order to fit it in, picture this as the big sheet of plywood. I laid it down, I traced it around, for the, I traced it around the radius, and then I simply moved the line in a half inch from that. Moving this over wouldn't be any good because move, moving the line a half inch inside is gonna tighten the radius, whereas moving this and scoring a new line would keep it the same. You know, whatever, you don't care. So. Ta-da! Now you get to see kind of what my camper's gonna look like with the window. You know, it uh, it looked the exact same as before I put the window in it, but now there's a black outline around the hole that looks all the way to my concrete floor. I suppose one of the perks to starting a camper build in February is that I can afford to have slow weeks like this. That's okay. I gotta play catch up later on down the road, right? Especially after the snow is gone, the, the, the winter's over, the rain has subsided, I can get stuff outside and get some floor space back. But with the limited floor space that I have now, my next step is to start laying studs down on top of this. But when it comes to the under bunk support, as well as the, the radius, uh, the, 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 the arc, the curvature of the nose of it, I've got to remember to flip those pieces upside down so I'm not building two left walls. Because, I mean, my, my camper needs to dance and you can't dance with two left walls or what, whatever they say. So. <laughs> Gee, Johnny, I've never seen anyone dance like that. This is the end of the video. This is where you click subscribe if you haven't. See you next week.